What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Enigmatica 2 Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So, guys, since last episode, I've been doing some things off camera. Uh, we've been continuing farming mobs with our mob farm that we have over there. We're now able to leave it running most of the time because most of the drops are being taken care of. I've been taking the good armor and things that I want repaired, brought back over to this chest, which is getting repaired over here. Tough alloy leggings at the moment. And then the resulting items that we are getting from our mob farm are being put over into this chest. I'm taking those and manually just dropping them off into our applied energistic system. Now I've had to add in quite a few more filters from what we were doing before. I did filter out gold. I think I'm filtering out uh, boron, like all the, all the steel leaf, the iron wood, all that stuff. As we've seen before, the steel leaf stuff, as with all the other Twilight, you can just craft it directly from these items. You get the enchanted version. That's the version we need. And we can, uh, I guess, uncraft it back into the, the steel leaf components themselves, right? So there's not a lot of reason. Like, after you get so much of it, we have 50 blocks of steel leaf. After you get so much of it, what's the point of keeping and repairing it? There really isn't a whole lot, right? Uh, iron wood is in the same situation. We have, like, 53 blocks of that. And what was the other one, nightly? Yeah, we got 32 blocks of the night metal stuff, and then that can turn into the nightly armor or whatever. Yeah, so I just kind of figured, you know, there's not a whole lot of reason to continue to repair this stuff and collect more and more. Let's just kind of call it good at this point. If we need more, we can remove those filters. So over here, uh, I actually, I guess, going back to my point that I was making here with disenchanting and repairing, uh, some of the armor that we've been getting, like the chain mail specifically, has been getting uh, multi-jump enchants on it. So I took the multi-jump, I disassembled that. Let's see, multi-jump. Uh, yeah, you can see we have multi-jump five, three, two, we got some multi-jump ones, and so on and so forth. I decided to enchant my boots with multi-jump. If you guys haven't seen this, this is pretty cool. Let me uh, go ahead and remove my ring of the squid so you guys can get the full effect on what this thing does. So... You know, normally in Minecraft, you do your jump and that's it. But with multi-jump, when you're like free falling or when you're coming down from your jump, or I think maybe if, if it's just air blocks below you, I'm not exactly sure how it works, you can jump again. So with multi-jump one, you could jump one more time. With multi-jump five, you can jump five more times. So we do one jump and then we jump again and again and again and again and again. And that's about as far up as you can go. But that's pretty incredible, right? Um... So what makes that really good, you combine that with like the ring of the squid, put that here, and your hang glider. So I'm just sitting here not doing anything. So we want to jump, bounce, and then get going, right? So we can get that extra speed boost from our boots. So we can, well, I guess we can do that. Or we could just do a regular jump, get going here, like so, get our hang glider going. And we can gain altitude without really slowing down. Like when we're going up with the ring of the squid, it kind of slows us down a little bit. Yeah, we don't get a whole lot of forward momentum. When we're using the multi-jump, yeah, you can get some altitude that moves you forward a little bit faster. It's all sorts of good stuff. I like it. Uh, it is a little annoying to use in the base, though. Um, so for like when we're going out and exploring maybe the Twilight Forest or the end or whatever, it's probably going to be great to use. I did make another uh, pair of boots. What did I do with them? <laughs> I guess I must have put them away. Yeah, I made another pair of slime boots. Slime. Yeah, here they are. Uh, in case I don't want to use an enchantment, I should have that in my pouch. Um, yeah, if it gets annoying enough and I'm like, okay, okay, enough's enough, I can always swap back over to it. Um, but yeah, I've been wanting to see what we can get from our mob farm over here. So I've been filtering out more and more stuff. So like gold armor is being filtered out. Like I said, all the twilight stuff now. So we've been getting some good stuff. We finally got a quantum suit boots. Oh, actually that's our second one. Wow. Okay. So we now have two pair of quantum suit boots. We have not seen quantum suit radium cleaver. <laughs> we have not seen quantum suit body yet. Um, so that's really good. The quantum suit, let's get away from the mob farm. I guess I could turn it off, but the quantum, want, Q-U-A-N-T, spell it right. The quantum suit stuff, as we saw before, if we go to the uses, uh, is used for making the wyvern stuff. Yeah, so the quantum suit body armor, if I wanted to craft this myself, it is craftable using that flux and fuse stuff. Then we got to make the electric jetpack and these iridium stuff. 
I guess it's not a huge issue, but that does require the elytra and some of these other items. Like we probably could do it. Not really that big of an issue. Uh, the, the whole issue here though, is that we need a million FE per tick and we need, what is that? A billion FE. So that's like a thousand ticks worth of 1 million per tick. Yeah, that is, uh, it's pretty significant there. We're not quite to the point where we can do this. I'm pretty sure we're not making a million RF per tick, FE per tick. At this point, we need to start storing power and making a lot more power before this is even going to become feasible. But anyway, that's some of the things I've been doing. I did go to the end and I bane mind using our diamond hammer. Do I have it in here? Yeah. Diamond hammer with unbreaking three on there. I got like six or 8,000 crushed in stone. I brought it over to our auto crusher thingy or auto siever over here that we set up last time. Yeah, we got quite a bit of uranium. Yeah. So I just set up a small storage crate. I filled this all up and then we just have um, yeah, the Ender IO conduit there going right into the thing. So it can fill up this entire sieve all at once, which is pretty cool. Do I have anything on me that I can show you guys this? Does it do dirt, I wonder? Can you sieve dirt? I don't know if I've turned. Hopefully I don't break something. I broke something. <laughs> and it's gone. So it only holds half a stack at a time, apparently. It looks like it's trying to do something. Can I get that dirt out of there? Apparently dirt is not something you can sieve, which is weird because almost every single mod pack sieving, like you want to sieve with dirt. Stored rotational power ticks per rotation. Interesting. All right, well, let's break this thing and set it back since dirt is not a thing that we can do here. Where do I put it here? Can I not set it there? Do I have to? Um... Okay, that seems to work. I wasn't sure if that was going to face it the wrong way or not. Okay, well, yeah, dirt really isn't what we want to do. You know, I broke that and I put it back. Oh, I wonder if the dirt went back in my dink knoll. That's probably what happened. I was like, did he just eat that dirt? Um, but yeah, I put all of the crushed end stone that I mined into here, and we ended up, after processing everything, with, I think, 3,300 uranium. So that made me feel a lot better about the situation. I did uh, replace the void resource miner back again with the void ore miner. And yeah, we're still chewing through this uranium pretty good. But with the auto save, it's not that big of a deal. It's mostly me going to the end, uh, vein mining a bunch of the stuff. I have to eat a bunch of my food, though, because two full vein mines pretty much makes me completely hungry. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we're able to get a whole bunch of uranium that way. So that's not that bad. Uh, so yeah, I was very worried about our power situation and we are doing okay now. All right. So I was kind of thinking what we should do next here in our quests in order to improve what we're doing here in the game. Uh, we still got some magical quests left that we haven't done. Let's claim this. I thought we claimed that one before, but apparently we didn't. Um, yeah, so advanced tier installer. I just made the advanced tier installer. I guess we made the basic tier installer at some point in the past because that was already claimed and completed. But yeah, I made the advanced tier installer so we can make an advanced enriching factory so we can do this a lot quicker. You know what? I think that's probably what we should work on today. Let's get the mechanism stuff all automated. Yeah, that's something that definitely needs to be done. Oh, you know what? Another thing that I want to do is the mob farm over here. We're still using all that vanilla redstone stuff, and we're having to use a lot of repeaters and all that to go all the way around. I kind of want to swap this all out for the Ender IO conduits, which we can do now, which is pretty cool. Got to keep checking this every now and then <laughs> to make sure we're not getting anything, or just to see what we're getting, I guess. Yeah, it looks like everything's good over here. Okay, yeah, the um, Ender IO Redstone Conduit. I was thinking we weren't going to be able to do that before, but as we found out, we can do the Item Conduit, and the Redstone Conduit is pretty much the same, Redstone Conduit. Uh, it does require us to get the Redstone Alloy Ingots, which we can make in the Alloy Furnace. So Redstone plus Silicon gives us that Redstone Alloy Ingot. So um, Alloy Smelter is the Ender IO way of doing that, but we don't have that. So let's do Redstone... We need a stack of that in silicon. Yeah, we got that. Uh, alloy furnace. Yep, we got one of those. Let's take this guy and set that down. 
place that right here that should be good and we will just create ourselves some redstone alloy ingots okay so while that's going let's pop this chest meat feast pizza top tier food always edible buffs players that's pretty awesome we should probably look at making some of this stuff so we can always eat this is not top tier but it is pretty dang close yeah that does 29 saturation that's pretty good and 12 hunger I'm not sure how many that is but anyway uh so we have the redstone alloy stuff let's go turn that into what we're looking for here uh oh we need conduit binder can we make like i don't know 30 should be more than enough i would think there we go awesome and i'm not sure if 40 is what we need i made the advancement redstone transfer oh that's awesome okay i'm gonna turn this mob farm off while i'm working over here because <laughs> the mob sounds are just gonna get on my nerves uh so yeah we can at this point get rid of all these extra blocks you know what? i turned the mob farm off and now it's gonna turn back on because i'm getting rid of the redstone lights aren't i yeah okay well anyway uh i'm gonna get rid of all this redstone i'm gonna place the conduit the conduit just connects to blocks like so yep you have to set this to output uh and then we're gonna output i guess on red because the default input color is red so we got to make sure all of these are outputting on the color red mm -hmm. anyway let me go ahead and do this and we'll be back it turns out with this alloy furnace we can craft some other things like energetic alloys and vibrant alloy ingots which is going to allow us to make ender fluid conduit which i think is going to be overall better for what we're trying to do here uh, so if I wanted to make the ender fluid conduit, it is this recipe here. All these other things away. We made those. Is that okay? Yeah, I think that's everything here. So ender fluid conduit, we got a stack of that. Uh, so I'm making a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of um, advancements here. Under pressure, basic fluid, instant fluids, just add ender. Mm -hmm. So what's gonna be nice about this? is now that we got this all switched over to the ender conduit, we can get rid of this connection here, get rid of that, place a ender fluid conduit here. We're gonna insert on that side, we're going to extract always active on that side. Yeah, and now we can just run this redstone conduit right through that. Yep, that is quite nice. Now the other thing I'd like to do is be able to swap this pipe out from um, the thermal expansion, thermal dynamics, to more of the Ender IO, so we could do item back over here, but we need power. So the conduit for energy, I haven't really looked. So that's 5,000 per tick conductive iron. You know what, that's not bad. What about the next step up? Enhanced energy conduit. So that requires the energetic alloy, which we were just making. Okay, yeah, we can do that. Uh, the Ender Energy Conduit, we can make those directly this way. And I think that is the highest tier. So that does 125,000 RF, FE, Micro Infinities, whichever you want to call it. So that is better than the Redstone Energy, which I think only does 20,000 Redstone Energy Conduit. These. 18,000. Um... Let's search for flux duct. I think there might be other tiers now. Let's see. So yeah, that's the redstone. Then we go up to the signalum and then you can go up to the resonant and that's 50,000. That's still less than what the Ender IO ones will do. And then eventually we can do the cryo stabilize, which is just infinite transfer. But anyway, uh, getting back to what we we're trying to do here, the conduits, if we want to swap this all out for Ender IO, I think that is possible. 5,000. What, which one is this one? This is a signalum plated impulse item duct. Signalum plated impulse item duct. Does it say this is 8,000 RF per tick? I don't even think the mob crusher requires that kind of power. Yeah, I think we could probably just get away with the lowest tier Ender IO conduit there. And then we can do power and items through that same one and then get rid of all of the thermal expansion stuff. I think that's going to be good. So I tried getting this energy conduit to connect to the leadstone flux duct. It does not want to. I still have not made it yet a wrench, but I was using a crescent hammer here trying to click this. Like, it does work with the conduit, but it won't force that connection. 
So anyway, we have a energy cell that we've had for a while. Uh, we made this, I guess, and then we never used it. It's got zero stored in it. So we'll place that here. Let's set the configuration. So top will be input and the front will be output. And yeah, we're storing power now. And that does connect to it. So if we go to the energy side, we want to extract only. And then on this side over here for the energy, we want to insert only. There we go. That should work just fine. Now the item, we can turn that off. We don't need item connected to this thing. This doesn't even have item storage. Yeah, it's kind of weird. But anyway, uh, so we're sending and receiving 5,000, or at least that's the maximum it can do. I think the lead stone that I replaced, it only does 2,000. So yeah, we're not quite getting that amount of power, but you know, whatever, it is fine. It looks like we're only getting 1,000 just by that number going up. It looks like it's counting up one at a time, not two at a time. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, so this thing should be hooked up. We should be good to go. Let's go upstairs, test it, make sure everything seems to be working. We'll turn the mob farm back on. I killed a zombie pigman right here. Um, so, oh, I haven't even seen how the lights look when we turn them on and off. It should just be instant on. Yeah, instant on, instant off. That's pretty cool. Okay, and make sure items aren't backing up out over here. So we are collecting items. I might want to put some speed upgrades into the condo, but it seems like it's working good enough. Yeah, we're going to want speed upgrades in there so it can do more. So I made some speed upgrades for the item extraction here, and it seems like it is extracting way slower with those speed upgrades in there. I don't get that at all. That seems really weird. Yeah, if we look here at extract... Round robin disabled, selfie disabled, whatever. And I put the extract speed up here. So if we take those out and we look at this, it's like it extracts the item so much faster. Yeah, I don't understand what's going on there with that. Like it loops through each one of these inventories or something and then it comes back around. That's why there's a delay sometimes. But yeah, it definitely, I don't know. It seems like having all 15 in there doesn't really do anything for us. I wonder if I put one in there so we can extract E that time. That doesn't seem to affect the speed at all. Well, that's fine. Okay, well, maybe we'll just put one speed upgrade in there. And I just made a whole bunch of these extras for no reason. Yeah, we definitely don't need them for the fluid, which I thought we were going to for the experience, for the essence. Uh, but speaking about this essence, so you can see right now I have 110 levels of experience. This thing is about half full. And then our experience pylon thing over here that we have over by our ME system. This thing is pretty much full. Well, it is exactly full. Yeah, so I've been messing around with this. I have put an XP shower on here so we can pull out uh, XP orbs so we can do mending or whatever. This does have an option where it'll spray orbs, but it does it very slowly. Yeah, and since the XP drain works directly on that, it seems to make sense that... We just do it this way. But anyway, the problem that we're having right now is XP storage. I want to keep collecting this because I'm sure we're going to want it for the future for when we do a whole bunch of enchanting or whatever. Like we've already gone through the phase where it's like, oh, no, we don't have enough XP to do what I want to do. Well, I want to make sure we're collecting it all. So I was kind of trying to figure out what the best options are to like hold on to this stuff. Um, this is currently an essence form and we can use that for mob duplicators if we wanted to, but we can convert XP directly into essence of knowledge, I think. And then that converts into essence either way. Um, I think the best option would be to like make something like a, uh, black hole tank, which we can't really do at the moment. Black hole tank. Yeah. That requires this black hole talisman, which requires Elementium and Gaia Spirit. So we'd have to have fought the Gaia Guardian, which is a little out of our range right now. So I don't think that's an option for us. Um, the other option I can see that we can use would be like the Experience Pylon or whatever the Ender Experience thing is. This thing, the Experience Obelisk, this would probably be the most ideal but yeah, I mean, we can make this stuff. What is, we, we would have to get into Ender IO in order to make the simple machine chassis and do all of this and the titanium alumide. I can't remember if we looked at that before, but anyway, um, I think probably our best option at this point is to do solidified XP. Yeah, the experience solidifier from actually additions. 
this, you can take XP and it stores it in item form and you can shift right click stacks of it at a time. You get like 30 experience per shift right click. I think that's gonna be a good way of doing it. And then this thing holds, I think it might be unlimited amounts of them. So it's like mass storage, easy access experience, and then we don't have to worry about it. Yeah, I think that's probably gonna be our best bet here. So that does require us to have two empowered diamonds, uh, blocks of diamonds. I'm not sure how we're doing on that right now. Let's go take a look and see where our diamond supply is. Uh, it's diamantine stuff, this. Well, we're not quite there. So let's just do two blocks of diamonds. We'll turn that into, oh, I gotta get rid of this enchanting lens thing. Put those right here, do that. Okay, so there's that. And then it's a bunch of clay, I think, to turn that into, oh, no, 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 the recipe is changed. Ooh, okay, so we need mana diamonds, zirconium dust, mac, mac, malachite, and then manulin. Right, so zirconium, I just made a bunch of that earlier today. Let's head over here. Uh, yeah, we had the, I put a rock crusher over here and I put a bunch of diorite into this. Yeah, so we got the zirconium dust. We can take that away now. Uh, so we have that. And the reason I was doing the zirconium was for that tier installer for these machines over here. We had a basic one in the system. I just put that in there. I needed more steel for <laughs> these, uh, uh, the speed upgrades. Anyway. Uh, so let's get back to this. We can put the steel dust right there and put those in there. Okay, that'll turn all the steel dust into the steel ingots. So we have the zirconium dust. What was the other things that we needed here? Uh, mana diamond, malachite. Malachite, so we have two of those. We need two of those. And I can't remember the other ingredients. Mana diamond, manulin. I think we oh we don't have any manual in okay so we need to alloy that can we make manual in a better way than the alloy smelter alloy furnace perfect okay so cobalt you know let's do 32 and our date 32 of those i think we still have that furnace over here right yep that's gonna make our life very easy it's a little slow but we only need two of these ingots so it's not a huge deal and then we have to make two mania diamonds I am, oh, actually, you know what? I just realized we have empowered diamond crystals right here. I didn't see those before. I saw these. Okay, well, you know what? We'll just <laughs> do it the easy way then. Oh my goodness, I am blind. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, so this thing does require two buckets of liquid XP or essence of knowledge. Uh, I think you can get the XP out of this one bucket. So I right click. Right click. Okay, so there's two buckets of liquid XP. So we have that portion. And then we need the advanced coil. Yeah, we don't have any of those coils in the system here. All right, so we do one of those. And then we do one of these. And then we do one of those. Awesome. All right, so a thing I'm not entirely sure about the experience solidifier. Yeah, I don't think you can pump fluids into it. So a thing we might have to do is take this XP shower and convert the essence into XP. Is that a thing that we can even do? I'm not entirely sure. Let's try removing this and that. Whoa, okay. I'm not sure what I just, oh, you know what that is? <laughs> yeah, that is into our water wheel. We should probably look at getting rid of that. I don't think that's something we need anymore. I lost a torch somewhere. I think it was right there. All right. So now that we have the experience solidifier, this thing will take any orbs that are in the general area and uh, convert them into the solidified XP. But again, I'm not sure. Can we just put that on there? Is that a thing? Doesn't look like we can do that. Okay, so we're gonna have to figure out some other method of doing this. Maybe a combination of piping out of the essence into Hmm, what's a good way of doing that? So it looks like an item called the Fluid Dictionary Converter will do what we want to do. If we search for liquid XP and we go to here, the fluid, you can see a Fluid Dictionary Conversion. We can take Essence and convert it into this. I don't know if that requires power or if that is free. 
It looks like we can also take Essence of Knowledge and turn that into Liquid XP. And then the Liquid XP can turn back into Knowledge or Essence. So, yeah, all that stuff is fine. All right, so we made this Fluid Dictionary Converter. Does that require power? No, it does not look like it does. That's pretty awesome. Okay, so let's do this. We want to get a conduit. We want the Fluid Conduit. Okay. So I think this might be, we might be even be able to put the XP shard directly on this thing. That'll be pretty cool if we can do that. So let's go down here. It's going to be like a crazy weird setup, but it should work. So we want to pipe out of that into this guy. Let me make sure, ooh, ooh, ooh. Let me make sure that all these other things don't connect here. So yeah, we want that to not touch. All right, so we want to go from here to here. So that'll be insert and extract. Okay, so I think what we have to do is once the fluid comes in here, it'll give us the option of swapping between what we want. So let's try doing this. Let's do always active fluid essence. It doesn't give me the option of switching to whatever fluid I want. So do I have to have that fluid already in here? Possibly. All right, so I wasn't sure how this worked. I went to go get a XP bucket and it looks like you can hover over stuff. It says hovering with liquid XP, but that doesn't really change anything. So what I had to do was select what this fluid was from the up and down selection here. So I selected essence and then from there we can convert it into whatever we want. So now we got liquid XP. Okay, so now that we have that, can we just put this directly on here and give it a redstone signal? Yes, we can, that's awesome. Okay, and then we can just put this guy right here and that will collect all of the XP orbs that we are generating and turning into solidified XP. Is there a better way of doing this? I'm not entirely sure. Maybe if we put the experience solidifier directly underneath the mob farm, it'll collect all the orbs before this guy collects them? I don't know. Anyway, um, I can put all of my XP that's on me into here. You can see we're holding like 5,000 of these things now. Yeah, and you can take those shift. You can right click one at a time or you can shift right click and you can uh, get a whole bunch of XP that way. Yeah, I mean, this is going to work. It's not a pretty setup, but yeah, it's definitely taking care of all of the XP we have in there. Now, if only we could get that out much faster and turn it into the solidified XP faster. Yeah, unfortunately, the XP shower only goes the speed that it goes. All right, well, we got that definitely taken care of. Oh, boy, I was just looking at the time on the video, and we're running low. I said I wanted to get this stuff done, so we got to be quick. Uh, so the basic infusing factory, or I guess a metallurgy infuser in its uh, starting form, has three slots. It has an input slot, it has a special input slot, and then it has an output slot. You can change that with the site config button here. So item config, we want to set the top to be input. We want the bottom of it, I like to set to the extra, the purple. And then the output, I like to set to the back. So we'll set that output on the back here. So we have input from the top, the special ingredient goes into the bottom, and then we're outputting the items to the back side of the machine. Uh, I I think you can also set these to auto eject on if you really want to, but I'm not sure that's going to matter with the item conduits that we're going to be using here. Um, so on the bottom of the machines, I just put an enhanced energy conduit. I just made some of that. Uh, I also made an energy cell here. I've upgraded it to resonant form, which I realize is probably way more than what we need. Uh, I did that so we can connect our conduits to our thermal expansion network since they don't really want to talk to these conduits. Anyway, um, so what we have here is I'm inserting on purple on the item conduit and then on the energy we're just inserting. I made myself a conduit probe. You can shift right click on one of these conduits and then you can right click on the other ones to paste the settings. So you only got to do that once and then paste them to the other ones. So we got that going on. Conduit probe is a little expensive though. Uh, I'm trying to click recipe on there and it won't let me do it. Uh, conduit probe so that does require grains of infinity and we have three of those in the system i'm not sure where we got those from but i do know you can light bedrock on fire and it's supposed to give you them i think we might have gotten those as rewards or something because i don't remember ever 
doing this. Then it also looks like he can use fire water on bedrock somehow for an even lesser chance. I'm not sure how that works. But anyway, uh, so we have the inputs for the specials down there. We want, well, we have the inputs for the ingredients through our applied energistics up here. And then we need to set conduits up here to extract the resulting items. And I'll just put them into this one. We'll set that to an insert. This one will be set to extract on green, always active. Okay, and then I will conduit probe copy this and paste it to these guys over here. So their green channel should always be extract, always active. Every one of those. Awesome. So they're all going to be extracting and then putting into this interface, which will complete any of the auto crafting recipes that we're doing here. Now, the other portion of this, we want these machines here to always be stocked with their special ingredient. So this one's right here is going to be carbon. Then we'll have redstone, then diamond, and then the um, obsidian stuff. But we have to have our advanced enriching machine crafting these, and then they got to be stored somewhere to be supplied. So let me get that portion of this auto crafting situation done, and then we'll be right back. All right, guys, I think we're pretty well set up here. So on our advanced enriching factory, we have a bunch of patterns that I can create things. So one coal turns into compressed carbon, redstone turns into compressed redstone, diamond into compressed diamond, and refined obsidian dust turns into compressed obsidian. Okay, so this is one of the patterns we have left to do, but everything else is pretty much done. So in this interface here, we have a crafting card, we have the recipes, and then we have it storing up to a stack of each different item into here, right? Okay, on the back of that, on the back of this interface, we are extracting out on the purple, just complete extraction. That's connected down into this bottom set of conduits where we are inserting on purple. And each one of these has a filter. So we're filtering the compressed carbon into this one. We are filtering the compressed redstone into that one. So all of those are always getting the correct item. So then we have diamond here, and then we have the compressed obsidian into this one. Yep. So I think this is probably, yeah, I think we're, we don't have a recipe in the system on how to make the pulverized obsidian. So let's do a recipe for that. So one obsidian is going to turn into four of these pulverized ones. So that turns into this, and then that can go into our pulverizer over here. Now the system knows how to make pulverized obsidian, and we should continue making more of that compressed. Yeah, here we go. Now that's working over here. Okay, so it knows just how many it needs to make, and then it's going to restock this up with a stack after the internal buffer uh, of this one is completely full, and it's got a stack pending. I guess we could probably make this so these are only holding, like, I don't know, five or ten of them or something. Not a full stack, but, you know, I, I think it's going to be fine just the way it is. So now that we have all of these things ready to go, we can start putting patterns into these interfaces here saying, Whatever it is that we need to infuse with redstone, we just say that item equals whatever the resulting item is, put them into here and everything is good to go. So these machines are pretty much ready. Uh, alloys are probably the first thing that we want to do. So I'm going to make the patterns for those. So we can auto craft those and we'll continue on. All right. Well, I was able to upgrade our four infusing factories. Yep. So we have all that stuff going on now. We got the enriched alloy patterns into each one of these machines so we can make up to atomic alloys by auto craft. Uh, so if I want to make the tier installer, the advanced tier installer, let's make four of those. So you can see it's going to auto craft the steel plates, turning to steel mechanical component. This is the more expensive version. We could make it cheaper, use half the amount of steel if we do it on the workbench ourselves. But honestly, I don't really want to mess with that. But yeah, we got everything here except for the zirconium ingots. Let's uh, get that going real quick. Just need to put that into the furnace. Okay, so tier installer. We want the advanced ones for those. Should be good to go. Yeah, let's start that up. Our auto crafting goes quite fast now, which is pretty awesome. And then, yeah, we can see all these things being turned into their respective items. Yep, everything looks good. Now, when I did convert these infusing factories from the original versions, um, 
I had to break the energy conduit and replace it. Like the conduit couldn't send power to these machines anymore. And we're probably going to have that problem when I upgrade them again. I can, I, I can only imagine, I don't know. I'm going to try this out. So upgrade all of those. There we go. So now they hold more slots. Auto sorts on. Uh, looks like they can hold more internal stuff. So we're making more of these things. Yep. All that stuff is getting filled up quite nicely. Awesome. All right. So let's try making something else. Uh, steel, for instance. Let's make like 100 steel. It's going to put 100 iron in there, use a whole bunch of the carbon. Uh, we can see how that's working over here. Oh, yeah, that's working pretty good. Yeah, it doesn't look like we are receiving power. Okay, so let's do what I just did. I had to break one of these conduits and then replace that conduit. And then, yeah, it's starting to receive power again. I don't know why I had to do that. I remember having to do this in previous packs as well. Yeah, it's just kind of a weird thing. Um, so anyway, that should all... Yeah, there we go. So now we're making that steel blend quite quickly. And then that, we have a recipe over here in our furnace to smelt that down. So yeah, we are making steel automatically using mechanism and thermal expansion a little bit. And I guess some Ender IO in there. Yep, so that is pretty awesome. All right, guys. I think we're going to go and wrap this up here. I'll go and button the rest of this up and make it look nice. <laughs> yeah, it's not looking so pretty anymore. Anyway, uh, I'll go ahead and get that done off camera. But, yep, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.